I greet you in Jesus' precious name and welcome to Shalom. We have a saying here and it goes something like this. One genuine miracle equals a thousand sermons. My dear friends, I am so excited to be with you today. Because yet again, the Lord has shown His power, His glory through nature to me and to many others. You see, this is not something strange. This is not a new phenomenon. God has been doing this from the beginning of time. He uses the elements, the sun and the moon, the wind and the rain, the fire and the droughts and the floods. He uses these signs continually to magnify His name, to show you and me that He is God and there is no other, never was and there never shall be. I want you to go with me straight to the Word of God. I'm reading from the book of Exodus out of the New Living, not the New Living Translation, sorry, the New King James Version. And uh, I'm just going to read something from uh, Exodus chapter 19. And we'll start at uh, verse 10. Now, while you're looking that up in your Bible, and I hope you are, because you need to always check with what I'm speaking about, and not just me, but every other preacher. Folks, it's got to be the Word, otherwise disregard it. I really mean that. There are so many wolves in sheep's clothing in these last days. You're not interested in my opinion. I'm not interested in your opinion. I say that with respect. We've got to believe what God says. Otherwise... We are worse than infidels. I want to say to you that the Lord wants us to prepare our hearts before He performs a miracle. Look at this. Exodus chapter 19 and from verse 10. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. Sanctify means to consecrate, to set apart. And let them be ready for the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. So there's Mount Sinai. The children of Israel are camped around Mount Sinai. From the time that they have been released from slavery out of Egypt, they have continually complained against Moses. A few times they've already tried to stone him. They've tried to kill him. Because they said, where's the food? And then God gave them manna from heaven. Where's the water? Then the water came out of the rock and so on and so forth. You should have left us in Egypt. At least there are graves in Egypt. That's what Moses continually was succumbing to. Continual barrage of uh, complaints. I want to say to you, if you're a child of God, sanctify yourself because the Lord will redeem you and the Lord will set you aside. You don't have to say anything. Moses never had to say a word. God said, I will speak for you. And they will know that you are sent by me because of the miracles and the signs and the wonders that I'm going to perform on this mountain. Then the Lord says, put a fence around that mountain. Put, a, put markers around that mountain. And tell the people not to stand on the base of the mountain. Otherwise, they will die. In fact, if they go over the mark, don't try and bring them back because you will die as well. Now, this is very hard for you to understand, but this is a holy God we're talking about. If they go over that line, stone them. Shoot them with arrows, but don't allow them to come onto my holy mountain. And Moses, I will show the people that you have been sent by me by what I'm going to do. Folks, I want to tell you, Time and time again, God speaks to His people through nature. He's still doing it to this day. Let's just continue a little bit further. You shall, see, you shall sit for the people all around saying, Bounds, bounds, Marcus, take heed to yourself that you do not go up to the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. Not a hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow. Whether man or beast, he shall not live. And when the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. 
And then Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. We need to prepare our hearts if you want God to move in your life. Some of you have been praying for years, Lord, I want a breakthrough. Lord, please help me, but you're not doing anything. God says start to sanctify, circumcise your hearts. Start to believe the word. Start to expect your miracle. Start to believe in miracles. Then Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not come near your wives. In other words, have no contact with your wives. Be set apart. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain. And the sound of the trumpet was very loud, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Folks, is that exciting or not? Now Mount Sinai was completely encompassed, completely covered in smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Folks, can you imagine that? In fire. Its smoke ascended like smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain quaked greatly. It must have been like a volcano. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long, I love the sound of the shofar. When it blows, my blood just curdles, folks. It came louder and louder. Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. Can you imagine the people listening to God speaking to his servant? Then the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai onto the top of the mountain and the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain and Moses went up and the Lord said to Moses, go down and warn my people lest they break through to gaze at the Lord and many of them perish. Also let the priests who come near the Lord sanctify themselves lest the Lord break out even against them. And Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai. For you warned us, saying, set bounds around the mountain and sanctify it. And then the Lord said to him, away, get down, and, when, and, and, and then come up, and Aaron with you. But do not let the priests and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest he break out against them. So Moses went down to the people and he spoke to them. Folks, let's just go to chapter 20, verse 18. Now all the people witnessed the thunderings, the lightning flashes, the sound of the trumpet, the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and they stood afar off. Verse 19. And then they said to Moses, you speak with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. The might and power of an awesome God. My dear friend, I want to ask you today, where are you standing with the Lord? You say, Angus, it's a long time since I've seen signs and wonders and miracles. I need to ask you the question, why? Maybe it's because you haven't sanctified yourself. You cannot serve two masters. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30, he who is not for me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. The Lord is a jealous God. You cannot serve many gods. Not in our faith. It is either Jesus or it's nothing. That's right. And even as I'm saying that to you now, some of you are getting angry. Why are you angry? What other God has ever done what I've just read? Not one. Not one, folks. I am telling you from experience that my God is alive and that He works in signs and wonders and miracles. I can tell you so many. I don't even have time to. Two years ago in Engedi, down in the Dead Sea, the lowest point on earth, I saw with my eyes the manifestation of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through signs and wonders and miracles. And many of you watching this program were there. 4,500 delegates from all over the world. We saw a mighty rushing wind that nearly blew the whole platform away. We've, we experienced rain coming out of heaven where it never rains. 
Hardly ever. You tell me that's not God. Some people say that's a coincidence. How can that be a coincidence when we're busy reading Acts chapter 2 and we ask God to do it again? The experience of the upper room. This is exactly what happened. You see, I want to say to some of us watching the program, stop doubting and start believing. Some of you are so negative that the, the, the devil, <laughs> he's got no work to do. You're doing such a great job. Now, I'm being sarcastic and please forgive me for that. Always, oh, well, that's just a coincidence. That's no coincidence, sir. Oh, yeah, but Angus, we've done research and we know that the wind does blow sometimes in Ngedi. So? Does it blow at the very moment when we read the word? And what about the rain? I'm a farmer, sir. That's where I did my agricultural, my theological training. I want to tell you, there's nothing there but rock and sand. You know why? Because it never rains. And yet it started raining as soon as we closed the Bible. Why? Because God wanted to show His people that He is alive. And that everything that we see here, He created. The wind, the rain, the sun, the snow, the sleet, and everything. He is the master of the wind. He is the maker of the rain, and I love him dearly. As I'm getting older, I'm getting more excited. I have never in my life been as excited as I am now. As I tell you the story, I'm preparing myself, sanctifying myself, setting myself apart, because on Friday, which is in a couple of days' time, I've got a job to do. I'm going to Bloemfontein. For those of you watching this program overseas, it's right in the heart of South Africa. They have been experiencing the worst drought that you can imagine. One farmer told a young son of mine, he had a thousand hectares of maize corn in the ground. That is 2,500 acres. His whole income. He said if he does not get rain by Friday, which is in two days time, he is going to be ruined. So we called a meeting to pray to the living God to send rain from heaven. It hasn't rained this year. We are now going into February. The rain start in this country in October. October, November, December, January. No rain to speak of. Just before I started preaching this program, that's why I'm so excited. My PA has just phoned me to tell me it is pouring with rain. <laughs> In Bloemfontein, and the place that we had uh, reserved for the meeting, the prayer meeting, because we are believing God for thousands of people, not just farmers, children, boys and girls, students, mothers, grannies, especially the mothers and the grannies, they're the prayer warriors, to come to this meeting for one hour and the, on a Friday morning from 10 to 11. We are believing for that. The, the facility is now underwater. <laughs> it cannot be used. So we have to relocate to a, a massive hall that can seat 10,000 people. I think it's going to be too small. And we are calling the people to sanctify themselves before the Lord. I want to say something to you, and it brings me to tears. God is so eager, and He loves you and me so much, that if he even hears an inkling that we are turning our hearts towards him, before we can even pray for rain, it's already there. What kind of a father is that, folks? We, we, we just made a suggestion. We just made a, a, we had an idea that we need to come together and to pray. And he's already brought the rain. It's there. The test on Friday will be how many will still come because it's now raining. One of my young cameramen just reminded me before the program. He said, how many lepers were healed by Jesus? I said, 10. He said, how many came back and said, thank you? I said, one. But you see, the season is not over. This is only the beginning. And every farmer knows that. I want to tell you something now. This needs to be a lifestyle for you and me. Not a one-off thing. We need to expect miracles every day of our lives. Why, Angus? Because that's the only way we're going to get through. We need to be ready morally, physically, spiritually, and mentally alert at all times if you're going to expect those miracles. There's some people see miracles every day and they don't even know it. 
Folks, I am so spiritually attuned at the moment because of what God's done in my life. And I am expecting a miracle all the time, and it's happening. I can tell you a story. A week ago, we called this prayer meeting for rain. Straight away, the devil says, this time, you're going to be exposed. This time, I'm going to show the people what a fraud you are, Angus. The Lord said, call the people together and pray for rain, and I will bring the rain. I made an announcement last week in the newspapers, bring your umbrellas. <laughs> Not a sign of rain anyway. I don't watch the weather report because that'll have, that's like a, like a roller coaster. I'll have a nervous breakdown. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. That's what Smith Wigglesworth said, used to say. And something like 12 or 13 people were raised from the dead under his ministry. Why? Because he believed. Now, Angus, how do we get that faith? Well, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. You need to start reading the word and stop reading the newspapers. You need to start believing the word and not other people's opinions. Because in God's economy, two plus two equals seven. <laughs> okay, there's a mathematician watching this program. He says, rubbish, I'm telling you, sir. How can a virgin woman conceive of a child? Exactly. How can three wise men come from Iran and follow a star and come to Bethlehem and worship the Messiah? Exactly. The same way that two plus two equals seven. It's a miracle. See, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, Without faith, you cannot please God. And he who believes must believe that he is. Is what? A miracle worker. And that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So we called the prayer meeting. I don't have any money. Why do I need money? We need a reason. And what is the reason? The people are perishing. And my fellow farmers who I love dearly. You see, if you are not a farmer, it will be very hard for you to understand what a drought means. A drought means that you are watching your income, your legacy, your inheritance, your future going down the drain every day. That's what drought means. Drought means that the cattle that your great-grandfather started breeding on the farm are now dying of hunger. That's what a drought means. Drought means that you're going to have to pull your children out of school because you cannot afford their school fees anymore. And the worst thing is a drought in a man's heart and his spirit will cause him to commit suicide and do worse things. That's what a drought means. God has shown me in the spiritual what a drought can do. Don't you tell me that a drought comes from heaven. A drought comes from the pit of hell where El Nino comes from. And I tell you what, it's going back there and the devil with him. Rain comes from heaven. It doesn't come from the devil. Rain is life. And every farmer watching this program says, yes, Angus, I can see you. <laughs> rain is life. Hey? <laughs> when it starts to rain, then you'll see farmers lose it completely. Dancing in the rain. Running up and down in the mud. Grown men, women, children, animals running around the field with their tails up in the air. They've got food to eat. It's cool. It's refreshing. It's life. I believe in miracles. So I'm going to Bloemfontein in two days' time. And it's going to be a very interesting meeting because I believe it's going to be pelty with rain. And we're going to give God thanks and we're going to repent and we're going to say sorry for not believing Him. And we're going to pray for a man who's been held captive by Al-Qaeda, a missionary. And we're going to believe that supernaturally he's going to be released. That's right. And we're going to pray for marriages, that God will reconcile marriages. And we're going to pray for sickness and disease. And the biggest disease of all is that disease of unbelief. You did not believe me, so you tied my hands, the Lord says, and I can do nothing for you. That's the one thing God can't do. He cannot work on your behalf if you do not believe him. He says in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, Call unto me, and I will answer you. 
and I will show you great and mighty things of which you do not know. Folks, this is my cathedral. This is my church. This is my father's creation. I want to tell you, start to watch the clouds. He's coming back on the clouds, I'm telling you, sooner than you think. And he says, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. Some of you won't even be ready. And you'll be left behind. Don't be that person. Say, Lord, from today onwards, I'm going to start believing your word. I'm going to start believing that you came down on Mount Sinai with, with lightning and thunder and heavy cloud and rumblings where the mountain shook. I believe that, Lord. And you know why God did that, folks? And it's so sad, isn't it? To show the people that he is God. And to show the people that his servant, who goes by the name of Moses, is speaking what God's saying, so that they wouldn't kill him. I want to say to you, one miracle equals a thousand sermons. People can say what they want to say. But when you start to have faith like that prophet Elijah, 450 prophets of Baal, of the devil, could do nothing to him. Those of you that are afraid of the dark, you're afraid of demons, you're afraid of evil spirits, don't be afraid. 1 John 4.4 4 is your key to your door. For greater is he who is within us, believers, than he that's in the world. That's it. You don't have to worry. I'm going to Bloemfontein to celebrate. <laughs> I'm going to Bloemfontein to tell the people that there is a miracle working God. I'm going to Bloemfontein to tell the people that this is the beginning of the rains that will go right through to the end of the season. I'm going to Bloemfontein to tell them to plant up more fields, buy more livestock, and start living a life of victory. Because if God is for us, Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, there is no man that will stand against us. So until we meet again, remember, it's by faith and faith alone. It took Martin Luther and John Wesley a whole lifetime to find that out. The just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. If you can believe that one scripture, you will start living a life abundantly. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, I came that they might live life and live it abundantly. So folks, put the past behind you. Say sorry to the Lord and move on and believe for your miracle because it's on its way. Until next time, goodbye.